Chapter 21, Episode 10 Sarah was in a panic at school. No one could see her condition, but she was seeing her classmates as lunch. That didn't happen often, but she hadn't killed or eaten for four days. She thought she would be fine until she got home, but she wasn't, and she was planning to meet Susanna at lunch, like most days. She didn't like telling her lies, but she also couldn't eat anyone at school. Text message. Didn't go for a drive. See you later, Susie. Susanna always left her phone in her locker. She would get the message at lunchtime. Sarah walked the block before grabbing a cab. Bus terminal, please. The bus terminal wasn't the best place for a quick fix, but it had a wide range of choices. She avoided drug addicts and alcoholics. Left a bad taste. The best bet was a young, arrogant, petty thief or some kind of hustler. Someone a bit criminal was morally more acceptable, but there were times when an anthropophagus had to do what had to be done. Survival first, scruples second. Hair okay, miss? Fine, thanks. Sarah paid the driver with a good tip and jumped out. Thank you. Sarah made her way through the maze of bodies and headed toward the spot where the young meat hung out. She didn't have time to make sure the prick deserved to die. There was only an hour till her next class. She put on her lost face, looking in her, in her wallet to see if she had money, making certain it was well visible, and walked on. The footsteps followed. The pursuer didn't know Sarah could hear her steps. His steps. She led him downstairs, looking around as if nervous, but careful not to notice her follower. He didn't notice that he was led to the basement. Sarah stood in front of the door that said, Do not enter. It was never locked. No one in his or her right mind would go in. Even crazy people wouldn't. She put her hand on the knob and turned around to face the young man. Are you lost, pretty girl? What do you want? He pulled out his butterfly knife to demonstrate his talent at swinging it about. How about you blow me, I take your money, and if you swallow, I won't even cut you. Okay. Sarah opened the door and pretended to run away. She went behind the high voltage conductors to the next door, checking to make sure she was had been followed. Went through that door and stepped into the gloom. There was very little light, but enough for her pursuer to see her run down the stairs. He followed without noticing how frightening his surroundings were. He thought he heard dogs barking, but saw no dogs. The only thing that moved was the girl. He wanted the girl. And there she was, in the middle of a forgotten, abandoned underground railway, taking off her clothes. He watched her get naked. Are you afraid now? No, just surprised. What is this place? It's a dinner theater. Yeah, right. For zombies and vampires. Take off your clothes. I haven't got all day. Seeing that the girl was naked, he put his knife away and took off his clothes. He was imagining trying to tell his friends about his adventure. They would think he was making it up. Okay, girl, suck it. As you wish. But first I have to break your arms. Just a formality. You what? Sarah kicked him really hard in the face to get things started. You fucking fucked up fucking cunt! He reached to grab her and she took his right arm and using his momentum ripped it back, breaking his elbow and dislocating his shoulder. She kicked him in his spine, not quite hard enough to snap it. She took his head and smashed his teeth out on a column, then busted his left arm over her knee. It was a rush job, something she preferred, preferred to save her, but not this time. She punched and kicked him for a few more minutes, mostly for her own benefit, then got down to giving the blowjob she had agreed to. He stopped screaming and groaned in pleasure and pain. There was a point where the body was nicely broken but not unconscious. The victim could enjoy one last orgasm before passing out, barely noticing that after he ejaculated, his cock was bitten off, his sternum was then smashed, his heart ripped out, partly eaten and a few other tender parts eaten. Sarah left the feast, a feast for the rats and maggots. She cleaned herself with the water dripping out of a pipe and the clothes from the fresh kill, got dressed and hurried back to school.